Hi there. Today we're going to show you how you can use a metrology device like this vernier caliper to measure the length of screws and bolts. We'll also be looking at why there are different ways of doing this depending on the type of screw that you're measuring. So the most common question you'll find when measuring screw lengths is do I include the head or not? Well, the answer is that it depends on the head type or more specifically, how the head of the screw is meant to sit on a surface. Here we have four fasteners, all with very different head types. A cap head machine screw, a countersunk self-tapper, a raised countersunk self-tapper, and a hexagon bolt. Now we can see just from a glance that they are all slightly different in terms of their thread diameters and their overall lengths. But interestingly, all four of them actually share the same nominal length of 70 millimeters. And that is the measurement we need to look for. But what do we mean by nominal length? Well, to put it simply, a nominal length is the measurement we use to define the size of a screw length. And this applies to both machine screws and self-tappers. The way screw sizes are written follows a standard format. The thread diameter comes first, such as M3, followed by the nominal length of the screw, such as 12 millimeters. The precise length of that screw though is actually likely to be slightly under 12 millimeters, as tolerances allow for undersizing and oversizing to ensure that components of the same functional size fit together. Nominal sizes then are just simplified terms we refer to when identifying components, when literal sizes or micron accurate measurements just wouldn't be convenient. And this is the same for both metric and imperial screws. So for the vast majority of fasteners, like the cap head screw and the hex bolt, where the head sits on top of a surface, to find their nominal length, we simply measure the distance from below the head to the end of the thread. Pro tip, whilst most people use the jaws of the vernier for all of these measurements, it's often more precise using the depth rod at the other end of the caliper, as you have two flat points of contact against the screw, which means greater accuracy. For the countersunk or flat head screw though, which is designed to sit flush with the surface, we would measure from the top of the head to the tip of the screw. And for the raised countersunk screw, where only the rounded portion of the head protrudes from the surface, we would measure from the lip of the head, its widest point, down to the tip of the screw. The reason for this difference is because the nominal length of a screw typically relates to the depth of the hole the screw is being fastened into, as opposed to the length of the threaded portion of the screw itself. This is sometimes given its own separate measurement, which as you might expect, is called thread length. It's a pretty simple concept then, right? Well, it would seem so, but there are of course some noteworthy exceptions to this. With shoulder screws, for example, it's the length of the precisely machined shoulder section that tells us what size to look for, with a separate measurement taken for the actual thread length of the screw. And with grub screws, there's often confusion over whether the tip of the screw is included or not in finding its nominal length. The answer? Well, with grub screws, the nominal and overall lengths are one and the same regardless of tip type or functionality. So we'd measure them in the same way as a countersunk screw, from top to bottom. So if you've got any tips on measuring components, leave a comment below to let us know. We hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like and share it. You can also follow us on social media or subscribe to the YouTube channel, remembering to click the bell to stay notified for more tutorials and announcements. Thank you for watching and have a great day. And let us know, what can you build?